Hi everyone. In this tutorial, we will begin to explore Power Automate cloud flows. This introductory lesson is designed with citizen developers in mind for those just getting started with Power Automate. This will be an overview of the platform, showing you where to find things. We won't set up a flow in this tutorial as that will be covered in the next tutorial in the series. It's recommended to have Power Automate open so that you can follow along. Let's start on the home page. The left-hand navigation menu has several items that we will focus on today. This is not a deep dive, so we are only looking at the items that will be useful to getting us started with cloud flows. The first thing we'll look at is My Flows. My Flows is where all of your cloud flows live. The moment you create a cloud flow, you can find it here. Using these tabs right here, you can toggle to your desktop flows and to your shared flows. Next, let's create a cloud flow. You can start by either clicking on the new flow tab up here at the top or by clicking create from the navigation menu here. The new flow tab is kind of a shortcut. If you click it, it gives you a list of options to build your flow. You can select from pre-designed templates built by Microsoft, or you can even build from a Visio template by exporting a Visio diagram. You can choose to build your own from blank with the first three options here showing you different types of triggers, which we will explore more in a bit. Your other option is to click Create from the menu over here. This brings you to the Create page, showing you all the options laid out on one page. Let's actually start by looking at templates. So here we have Start from a Template. Let's actually go down here and click all templates. Now we're on the template page. There are a lot of templates to choose from. Depending on what you are trying to achieve with your flow, you should first check to see if there is an existing template for that. Let's say that you want to create a flow that will save Outlook email attachments to your OneDrive. Most likely there's going to be a template for that. We can search templates up here. We know that one of the systems we're going to use is Outlook. So we can just search for Outlook and hit enter. And look at that. The very first template here is save Outlook email attachments to your OneDrive. By clicking on this, it will create the flow for you. Let's go back to the create page. Another option to start building is to simply start from a connector. If we scroll down to the bottom, we'll find that section start from a connector. But what is a connector? Connector is basically a set of pre-built actions and triggers that can be used to connect all sorts of different applications and make them talk to each other. If we select one of these connectors, it will take us to the connectors page where we can see all of the triggers that connection has available. So let's go ahead and click on SharePoint. It takes us to this page and we can see all of the triggers, all of the SharePoint triggers that are available here. Now, if you want to see what actions are available outside of the triggers, we can actually click on this see documentation link. That's going to take us to the Microsoft documentation page. And here we have the SharePoint connector page, the reference page, and we can scroll down here and we can actually find the list of actions. So here's the actions section and we have all the actions with descriptions. As you can see, there's quite a few. But you can also just start building your flow and you will see all the actions from the build page, which we will explore more when we start setting up our flow. And let's see what happens when we select one of these triggers. 
it's going to take us right to the build page with that specific trigger ready to be populated with our information. Let's go back to the create page. We can hit back on our browser. Now it's going to show you this pop-up and it's going to say, if you leave this page, you will lose all the changes since your last save. Are you sure you want to leave this page? If we click okay, it's not going to save anything. Let's go back to our create page. Now let's take a look at this start from blank. So this is another option you have to start a flow. If I don't find a template I can use to create my flow, I typically will start from blank. Now there's three options we're gonna look at. There's automated cloud flow, instant cloud flow, and scheduled cloud flow. And you can see they each have a small description here. Let's take a look at automated cloud flow. Click this and you will be prompted to name your flow and select a trigger. Now you don't have to name your flow now, but you do have to select a trigger to continue. Let's close this and take a look at instant cloud flow. There are a number of trigger options here, as you can see, but the one we will look at here is the one we most often use when we are testing a flow that we will later add an automatic trigger to. And that option is manually trigger a flow. Let's close this and take a look at the last option, scheduled cloud flow. Use this option if you are setting up a flow that runs on a schedule. In the next tutorial in this series, we are going to set up an automated cloud flow and explore how the navigation works for that, as well as how to share a flow once you've completed it. Thanks everyone for watching, and we'll see you in that next video. Take care everyone, bye-bye.